was a student nurse who started her training in January 1965. I did the three month PTS preliminary training school training uh, beginning January 65 and, um, and it was not long after I'd finished this preliminary training that I was summoned to matron's office this particular day and for the life of me I could not think what I'd done wrong. That was the usual reason that you got summoned to matron's office, you, some misdemeanor or other. Anyway, I went, knees trembling, and um, when I got in there, she was absolutely delightful, Ray. I was greeted with a big smile, and she said, come in, Nurse Poynton. She said, um, Princess Margaret is coming to the Medical Institute on the 1st of July to open the new Central Outpatients Department and the A&E department in the infirmary. She said, your name has been pulled out of the hat to present a bouquet of flowers to her. Um, are you all right with this? Ray, I, I couldn't answer it. I, re I was, abs well, momentarily short, short of words. But anyway, I thought, wow, that yes, I'd love to do that, Mason. Thank you very much. Anyway, the big day came. Mum and Dad got an invite and they were absolutely thrilled because they'd never ever seen any anybody belonging to the royal family, neither had I. Um, so we went to the Medical Institute on the 1st of July, early afternoon, and I was given this, shown to my seat, which was sort of, I think, second row back from the front, and given this lovely bunch of flowers to give to the princess. Somebody gave me the cue, and at that time the steps onto the stage of the Medical Institute were polished wood and I'd bought myself a new pair of shoes for this occasion. I didn't think it was right to uh, be presenting this to the Princess Margaret in a 39 and 11 pair of tough duty shoes, you know they looked a bit, well you know what they look like don't you? So I've got these rather nice um, flat black shoes but they got leather soles and um, I had to ask Dad for some sandpaper to sand the soles down of these shoes because I was frightened of making a fool of myself with falling, you know, slipping on these, these polished steps. I was given the okay to go up and give the princess these flowers and got, and I went up, and that was okay, gave her the flowers and, um, and came, I had to come back down the steps backwards Apparently this is protocol, isn't it, for the royalty? And back to my seat, you know, without any hiccups. So that was that was good. Princess Margaret was a lot smaller than what I thought she would be. I mean, at that time I was about five foot, and she was about the same height as me. Oh, but she got the most beautiful blue eyes, Ray, that I've ever ever seen. Um, but loads of makeup. It really, yeah. And you know, she never said thank you for these flowers. And they were, and they, it was a lovely bunch of flowers. It really was, but she never said thank you. <laughs> and that was the end of my day. The NHS, formed uh, in 1948, was still really in its early years, but by by uh, by the late 50s, um, clearly uh, things were different. And um, I think my grandfather was very very keen that. Uh, North Staffordshire, which was a place of medical excellence, should benefit from um, better facilities, um, maybe a situation in which um, scholarships and things could be initiated, a place for people to come and debate medical matters. And um, that's really how the, I think the idea formed. And of course, he had a great deal of support from uh, the local medical fraternity. Um, John Ramage, for example, is one of the people that I would um, immediately point out. and. Um, uh, the fundraising, I think, went remarkably well, and it was intriguing to see that even the National Union of Miners immediately made a donation of a thousand pounds to to the fund, and um, so that was that was that was a marvelous start, really. Of course, the institute's been around for sixty years now. Uh, in fact, uh, it's, not, it's sixty years exactly since Colonel Sir George Wade uh, started the trust to find. What was then a large amount of money it doesn't sound much nowadays, a hundred thousand uh, pounds, but it all came from local voluntary donations, and the institute was built. Uh, of course, in its early days, it was it was very different, but it's always been a, 
a lively membership-led, vibrant organisation. Uh, in the early days it was a place for consultants and GPs to do what we would call nowadays networking, but of course that name wasn't used in those days. Uh, and today it's just as vibrant with people coming in for uh, professional development, career development, as well as the research uh, projects for which we are, it's, it's our main activity nowadays, is to provide funding uh, for research. I'm John Muir and at the moment I'm uh, chairman of the Medical Institute. Um, I first came here in 1971, um, which is a hell of a long time ago now. And uh, I joined the Medical Institute because everybody did at that stage. Um, it was much more in the middle of things because, as you'll be aware, there was the orthopaedic hospital on one side of it, central outpatients behind it, and the Royal Infirmary around on the other side. Um, so I joined that, and uh, it used to be quite a regular place for people to meet up at the end of the day. There were no um, facilities for lecture theatres outside that in Stoke, um, and it was also... Um, a place that um, you could hold a meeting, you could go for a beer in the evening or whatever you liked. Um, we've a little bit been left out of things now with the retreating of the other hospitals so that we're very much on the edge but I think it's still a very valuable thing. Um, I've been here a long time as I've said. Um, I was in fact the longest serving consultant in the entire NHS uh, in anything at all. Uh, having started work in 1971 and having retired uh, a couple of years ago, um, having been part-time for the last few years. Um, I'm not quite sure why they made me uh, chairman after all this time. I think it's perhaps just because um, I was there as part of the furniture almost and, uh, and I had always been a member. My name is uh, Richard Strange. I'm a clinical biochemist by profession. I've worked in this general area uh, since 1980, I came, came here from Edinburgh. I was a lecturer there in clinical chemistry. And having been allegedly fully trained, I came to work in the NHS, but with guaranteed academic time to work at Keel and develop a research programme, which was pretty much non-existent in the old pathology block, um, which has now been sadly knocked down. I very quickly came into contact with the, with the North Staffordshire Medical Institute both through the, my NHS activity, because there was a lot, of teaching, um, a lot of teaching activity being carried out in the Institute during the working day and in the evenings, um, grand rounds, case presentations, teaching of junior doctors, um, which was very enjoyable. But also that they uh, had uh, money that they issued on a once or twice yearly basis um, through a research advisory committee and fairly soon I was pleased to be asked to sit on that committee which I did off and on over, well, since 1980 to the present. I'm actually still a member. So I'm Sean O'Brien. Um, I'm Professor of Obstetrics and Gynaecology uh, Emeritus because I've just retired of uh, Keel and I've been associated with the North South Medical Institute for about 30 years now. Firstly as a member, then a member of council. I was um, secretary at one stage, maybe twice, and I was chairman 15 years ago, and I was chairman up until just last year. And so that's my main, uh, that's my main involvement. Long ago, back when I first started, the Medical Institute was a full postgraduate medical centre with library, many, many meetings, big association with uh, the NHS, which disappeared when the new build was uh, completed and they took away uh, the library and what was really much of its heart. What happened thereafter was to develop the Institute very much as a conference centre and postgraduate education centre without it being such a focus for the hospital. And that's, that's continued to develop and has been very successful in my mind. That It was the first medical institute in the country and uh, it was founded um, because Colonel George Wade, who I think had become aware of some of the problems of um, not having a central library for the medical school, not having places where you could have reasonable lectures, and at the beginning there were also facilities for doing research. Um, now a lot of these things have now moved on. The library is now um, in the main medical school and there are lecture theatre facilities. So to a certain extent we've lost our preeminence there. 
but we were nevertheless the first medical institute in the country and a lot of places followed our uh, example. My name is Professor Nicholas Versailles. I'm Faculty Dean of Research in the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences here at Keele University. I joined Keele in 2007 um, and at that time was approached by the late Professor Elder, um, former chair of the North Staffordshire Medical Institute, to, and asked if I would sit on the Research Awards Committee. Um, as a new lecturer, I was delighted to help at that time because um, any opportunity um, beckons. Um, so I accepted uh, Jimmy, as he was known, as invitation. And, and since that time, I've, I've, I've served um, the, the research awards process within North Staffordshire designed to really help other academics and clinicians secure those bits of um, pump priming monies that, that, that the Institute supports that enables larger activities to develop with a real focus on research happening within the North Staffordshire environment, first of all, and second of all, that, um, that underpins really our new academics and our new clinical academics to allow them to move on to, to bigger and better things. The Institute's always attracted a good deal of uh, very emotional support from all researchers in, you know, in and around North Staffordshire. It was very much a hospital-based place to go for money in those days. It, it uh, was run largely by practicing clinicians, GPs, hospital consultants, who I think felt quite strongly that this was their nest egg and uh, it should go on clinically relevant projects, which suited me because I'd adapted laboratory research to answering clinical questions and my, my collaborators were, were, were largely practicing clinicians. But one was struck by the enthusiasm and that the Institute was uh, unquestionably a force for good. I think it's important to remember at that time that Keir was a very small university. It wasn't a medical school. It was decades from being a medical school. And um, it didn't have a very high status. I think if you talked about North Staffordshire, Stoke-on-Trent, Keele, and what was then the North Staffordshire Hospital, uh, the North Staffordshire Hospital demanded quite a lot of respect because it was phenomenally busy and relatively understaffed and underfinanced, whereas Keele was seen as a rather small, somewhat parochial university. Let me emphasise, that has changed massively. Keele's a first-rate um, international level university now with a thriving medical school. But in the 1980s, it was difficult to go to the sort of grant-giving bodies that one needed to get one's research funded and expect them to actually believe you could carry out sophisticated international level research. Some people succeeded, um, many put in loads of applications and, and succeeded in few like myself, but the Institute was always there to fill the gap and would often take a risk um, to some degree because the pe at least some, sometimes all the people around the committee knew the applicant and knew that he was a, or she was a good researcher and would get the job done, uh, whereas in a rather anonymous national or even international grant giving body they'd be in competition with people who might have friends on the committee. And I benefited enormously from this. We got um, money to kickstart projects, which was very much the Institute's philosophy anyway, but also particularly to kickstart projects that were very controversial. And uh, one particular project was looking at beneficial effects from ultraviolet radiation, with particular respect in our case, to reducing the risk of prostate cancer. Now this was absolute heresy when we um, initiated this work. Uh, it started for an idea from a then medical tra uh, sur sorry, surgical trainee, Chris Luscombe, who's now a consultant neurologist in the hospital, came to see me, did an MD, got a really nice piece of work, which we duplicated, but was difficult to fund because it was advocating that under certain conditions, exposure to U ultraviolet radiation, sunlight, was a good thing at the height of an international scare about sunlight and malignant melanoma risk. So even though we got a paper published in The Lancet, we, we couldn't get funding. So we came to the Institute to keep employing um, a technician and we got a uh, further year's money which enabled us to provide some what I think was incontrovertible evidence. And of course, research 
is to a degree fashion driven. If people see things that they like the look of, they'll take a risk too. And so the weight of evidence began to build that yes, UV is damaging, but it may also be beneficial, probably, but not certainly through vitamin D. And that for me has always remained a seminal occurrence in the getting money, which was difficult, but getting money from her for heresy was particularly difficult. So it's just a, one example, and I'm sure many, many colleagues could come out with others equally graphic, where the Institute is very much local money for local people and kept good quality research at when it was at a delicate infant stage, kept it going and let it deliver on an international stage. I have received support from, um, from the awards committee prior to this time and good examples, uh, this provides a good example of what we can achieve with small amounts of money. So, so for instance, um, we received a small sum um, to develop some tendon tissue engineering strategies working with orthopaedic clinical academics at the Royal Stoke University Hospital. The pilot work we were able to do with that funding went on to secure, enable us to secure two PhD students, to enable us to secure um, European Union funding and to enable us to secure uh, Medical Research Council funding. Um, that came from a £10,000 award um, from the North Staffordshire Institute that was translated into probably around a million pounds in funding. But without that initial sum, that initial award, we would not have been able to go on to achieve that. And that, if you like, provides a model that we can repeat over and over and over, and which you will hear about from all of our previous award winners, and how that small amount can just provide the energy, the impetus, to get them over that initial challenging hill, to get those initial observations, that key pilot data, to enable the larger grant applications. One important thing for me from a personal point of view is in the very early days of my time in North Staffordshire I was able to achieve some of these pump priming grants myself and I was able to set up research in premenstrual syndrome, preeclampsia, that's hypertension in pregnancy, uh, diabetes and many other things actually. Uh, probably the most recent and important grant we've had has been in relation to perhaps the premature labour one, but more important is perhaps the one related to the measurement of mood through the menstrual cycle, and we have been able to, with Institute Money, develop um, a smartphone app which actually allows patients to measure their symptoms through the month, through the months of treatment, and actually maybe even be able to provide an electronically developed diagnosis. I'm Pong Tse Wu. I'm an academic obstetrician and gynaecologist, uh, so that means I do research uh, as well as see patients at the hospital, the university hospital. Um, so my connection with the North Staffs Medical Institute uh, is that they were um, very nice and gave me um, my first ever grant funding um, to help me to do my research. Um, so that really um, helped me to start my research and set up my laboratory um, to do stem cell research. Um, and why did I want to do stem cell research? Well, well that's because with the, um, in terms of obstetrics, um, I work with a pregnant woman and there's a lot of placenta after the babies have delivered. Um, and you can use the stem cells from the placenta um, to do all sorts of um, research to help um, potentially babies with health problems. My name is Professor Mamas Mamas. I'm Professor of Cardiology based at Keele University and the Royal Stoke Hospital. And I've had an association with the North Staffs Medical Institute probably for the last four or five years. In fact, they have supported my research with a large grant of close to a quarter of a million pounds. So what do I do in my job? Well, I undertake procedures in patients' coronary arteries, in patients that have had heart attacks where they have narrowings or blockages in the coronary arteries. As an example here, you can see this is an angiogram, so this is a picture of someone's coronary artery, and you can see a narrowing in the coronary artery, and we treat those with metal tubes called stents. The North Staffordshire Medical Institute has funded research into complications from these procedures, in particular bleeding complications. 
why they happen, how often they happen, and in whom they happen. And so this has really helped us understand these sorts of complications much more greatly than we have been able to do so in the past and has really contributed to changes in our practice, how we um, undertake these procedures differently to minimise these complications. I feel very grateful to the Institute for giving me this funding and so I wanted to give something back and think about how we can help to fundraise so that the Medical Institute can carry on and provide funding um, for other young researchers to get them started off in their research journey. It's been a community centre too. Um, the local community of Hartsdale so uses it for all sorts of events, uh, but also various specialist communities help people like Health and Safety Group from North Staffordshire. So of course we have our annual Wade Lecture where we've attracted some very famous people over the years. Um, people like Ian Wilson, people like Tristan Hunt who came last year, Jim Al-Khalili who's become a real TV and uh, radio personality with his uh, interesting outlook and exciting outlook on science, introducing science to people like me who are not really scientists. Um, so it's a, an exciting place where all members of the community, it's not just health professionals, or that's essentially what the Institute was founded for. It provides a role for the local community too. I think the enduring success of the Institute is largely down to the enthusiasm of the staff, wonderful staff that run it, but also the um, a number of medics that support the, um, the, uh, the venture and the young people that receive uh, help and funding from it and I think that would be uh, something that my grandfather would have approved of very much. He was always a man who was looking towards the future and encouraging young people. Uh, his first question to young people would often be well what are you going to do or what do you collect was another and, um, and I think that the, uh, the, the, the combination of enthusiasm that started in the, in the 60s has carried on right through. We've had some very very distinguished people who have benefited from the Institute over the years and uh, I think North Staffordshire, I know we're blowing the trumpet for the county, but it is a centre of excellence in uh, the field of medicine and continues to be so. And I think that the Institute is part of that. I do like the Medical Institute, <laughs> I really do. I don't know what we'd do without it. Yeah, yes, it's, uh, yeah, everybody who works there, they're so helpful. They really are, they're lovely people. Lovely. It's always been a very friendly place. They've always got people to run it who are helpful. Who, uh, who want to use the institute for the, the good of, of, of the hospital, the university, of, of research, but also for the town. Well, the institute is our local organisation to support local talent and be there to support the local community. I think that's what the institute is about, it's there to progress the local research, but as well as that to be the centre of the local community and help to bring the community together. The North Staffordshire Medical Institute I think is important. It's important for contributing to improvements in health for patients in Staffordshire. Often with national large charity organisations, much of the funding is um, undertaken and given in very remote areas. The North Staffordshire Medical Institute ensures that adequate research funding is given for the benefit of local people. And it's useful also for people within the hospital as well as the university. A lot of um, junior people have had funding from the North Staffordshire Medical Institute and these individuals have grown then and have been more competitive for nationally and international um, grants which will only benefit people in North Staffordshire. We've recently had a major improvement to the Institute um, which I'm delighted by and it's all due to the generosity of Jeremy Wade and the Wade Foundation um, and also to um, people like um, various members of the committee who've put in an awful lot of time there um, Pat Doherty, for example, has devoted uh, immense amounts of time and effort uh, and has really got us pound for our, you know, for our whack as far as the, the, the extension and the, uh, all the redecoration is, is concerned. And I think we have facilities now that are as good as you will find anywhere in the district. 
So the new developments have been very positive. The place is modernised, but it remains warm in the same way and familiar in the same way. And I think as time goes on, it'll become progressively more important for the medical community and the community itself in North Staffordshire. So we continue to fund research which will make North Staffordshire an attractive place for medical practitioners, consultants to come. And in turn, the community of North Staffordshire will benefit by having the best consultants and the best health care uh, that you can get anywhere in the country. And when the Institute was set up, it was, you know, there was challenging times. Um, and we look around and we have challenging times again. And this is when institutes such as the North Staffordshire Medical Institute can provide some leadership and identity to local communities and really make the community feel um, and understand that it's there to serve for the betterment of all. And that core message has to come through and, and I, do th I think we owe it to ourselves as an institute to, to promote that message strongly across our community and to really make sure that, that, we, that we adopt a civic responsibility um, and get the message out to the community that, that yes, we, we serve research and we underpin research, but, but we're really there also to serve the community, be that Hearts Hill, be that Stoke-on-Trent, be that the greater North Staffordshire area. That, that is our community and that's what we're here to serve. I think if I was to sum up the Medical Institute, I would say that my fervent hope would be that the, the people who got it all going 55 years ago would be as proud now of it as they were in the mid-60s. Um, it's an enduring success and I think something that North Staffordshire could be very proud of. Mm -hmm.